Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome to the very first episode of Cookie Cutters. And welcome back. So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that this video is going to be an intro to the channel, to who I am, to what we're going to be working on. So it might be a little bit boring just because there's not going to be much wrenching. There's not going to be much grinding, no welding, nothing. Uh, it's going to be me sitting here in front of the bench, just going over a lot of the specs on the car. And I mean, if you're here from the Instagram, then... You guys have kind of a rough idea of what's going on, but if uh, you're not here from the Instagram and you guys don't know anything that's going on, then hopefully you guys watch this video all the way through, and by the end, you guys are interested to see what comes in the future of this channel. So with all of that being said, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dave. I'm an automotive machinist and engine builder. I've been at this for the last four years, and I mean, prior to that, I did go to school for automotive machining, so... If you want to get technical, then about, I've been at this about six years. And I mean, now I just build my car here in my garage and yeah, I like to weld, I like to fabricate, you know, here and there. Uh, but I mean, outside of all of, you know, the car stuff, I mean, I'm a gamer. I like to play just a bunch of first person shooters. So yeah, that's basically who I am. So on to the channel. What can you expect from this channel? Uh, to begin with, cookie cutters. Why did we name it? cookie cutters instead of like something else uh, you know if you're an S chassis person then you know you automatically think S14 you know kooky S14 uh, well that's it's kind of an ironic name because we're going to be taking cars that are built in a cookie cutter style and we're going to be adding our own twist or you know it's going to be a chassis that you know you expect us to do a certain thing because that's usually what you know the car community would do uh, collectively and we're just going to go and just deviate from the norm, basically. And, uh, yeah, when I say we, I mean, you know, my group of friends as a collective unit because, you know, we're, we're, we're a mix of a bunch of different type of car guys, especially uh, in nowadays uh, car community, you know. Everybody's so divided. Everybody, you know, they, they hate on each other because, you know, it's not the type of style that they like. You know, a lot of the track guys, they hate on the stance guys. A lot of the stance guys just, you know, they just hate on everybody that hates on them. And, yeah, it's just going to be us doing our own thing. You know, I mean, like I said, I'm a motor guy. Uh, one of my friends, he's a stance guy. Another one of my friends, he's a show and go guy. Uh, another one of my friends, he's a mini truck guy. And I mean, I also have other friends that do track days and, you know, there's a, there's a few other friends that just like to wrench on cars. So, uh, hopefully with this channel, you know, we get to reach out to all of, you know, the JDM community, I guess you could say, because it is going to be mostly, you know, a lot of Japanese, uh, builds and, you know, motors, cars, you know, and all that stuff. So that's the basic rundown on the channel. Um, a lot of fabricating, a lot of welding. A lot of cutting, a lot of engine building. Hopefully we can provide some tips along the way for, you know, let's say engine building, you know, fabricating. Um, yeah, and all that other stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy the channel. And yeah. So on to the main reason why this video was even made in the first place. Uh, if you guys are here from the Instagram, you guys will already know what it is that we're going to be working on. You guys already know all of the fabrication that's been done. Uh, but yeah, for those of you that are here that don't know what the hell's going on, then yeah, allow me to introduce the 1985 Nissan 200SX. It is, yes, a Nissan S12, the forgotten S chassis that, you know, is, yeah, forgotten all the time, forgotten. I mean, it's hard to be forgotten when you have to go up against the one and only Toyota 86. They literally made an entire show dedicated to this damn car. So, I mean, in a way, I guess it's pretty cool that, you know, the S12 is forgotten because there's a lot of them out there. A lot of them aren't crashed. A lot of them aren't being parted out. Uh, but yeah, it's still kind of hard to find one because they're very unknown. So as far as my S12, there's a lot that I can say about it. 
Um, I'll probably go over a little bit of the history. I believe this S12 was originally purchased by my grandmother straight off the lot. I could be mistaken though, but I know that this S12 has been in the family for a very long time. Uh, after it was my grandmother's, it became my uncle's, and then after my uncle owned it for a while, it obviously became mine. And uh, yeah, so far it's been fully gutted on the interior. Uh, all of the suspension has been redone. Uh, the motor is fully built. I know a lot of people hate that term, but I can 100% say with confidence that yes, it is fully built. Basically, this S12 is an S13 in an S12 chassis. Yeah. Now, I didn't anticipate ever making a YouTube channel for this car. You know, I never anticipated making a build vlog, so I never documented any of the teardown, well, much of the teardown. Uh, I didn't document much of the build. I mean, I did take a lot of pictures of it. So from here on out on the video, it's just going to be me talking, giving all the specs and overlaying all the pictures that I did end up taking about a year ago now or a year and a half ago now. So sorry for that. But like I said, I never anticipated making a YouTube channel for this car. So please bear with me. So the one part that I did manage to capture of the teardown was when we pulled the motor out of this damn thing. Um, one weekend while the motor that sits in it now was getting built, we were just like, nope, we gotta make room. So this motor needs to peace out. Jecto Cito, cuz, you know? So uh, yeah, you know, the homies came over and we just pulled it out. Now I still have the CA20 that came in this thing stock and uh, that's gonna be like a Frankenstein motor for later on in the future on this channel. Uh, don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it yet, but the only reason I kept it is because before I had the S12, I actually owned an S13 with the CA18 DET in it. So, you know, I kinda, I kinda grew attached to that motor since it was the very first motor that I had ever rebuilt. Uh, I was still in school, I was learning how to use all the machines, and yeah, I machined it, I blueprinted it actually, and I ran it through a dyno sim to make sure it was going to make, you know, around 300 horsepower. So, yeah, I, I grew really attached to the CA motor. So, the, you know, the CA20 that came in the S12, I might use it to make some sort of a Frankenstein stroker with a dual cam head. So, maybe though, maybe. It's a big maybe because I know it's a lot of work. So, but that's one of the things that, you know, like I said, kooky cutters, you know. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in that. Let me know. So with all that being said, this sits in it now. Yes, piece of crap, KA DET sits in that engine bay now. Um, nah, it's actually not a piece of crap. Why a KA? I mean, you know, why not SR, you know, or you know, something else that's a four banger, that's light, that's, I guess, more reliable? Uh, well, because just like a lot of other people that own S12s, you know, they were actually inspired by Henry's S12 build. But that was just for the innovation side because, you know, I was like, man, this guy has power by max, you know, coilovers, uh, he has a K swap, you know, he got featured on Speed Hunters, you know, Motor Mavens, he got, you know, all this stuff. But the very first S12 that I saw was, I want to say, 2012, maybe, 11, somewhere around that time. Uh, I went to Formula Drift Irwindale since Irwindale is really down the street from me. And they had a little show, a little car show behind the pit area. And that was the very first time I had ever seen an S12. And I was like, man, what car is this, you know? So once I found out that it was a Nissan S12, I was like, man, this thing is really cool. So I started like straight up fangirling over it and uh, yeah. But 
my choice of motor was mostly because of you know all the write-ups that were already available uh, at the time for it and i was like well it should be easy but yeah might as well do it and i'm not really a big fan of the sr i don't i mean i know a lot of you guys love that motor but you know nah 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 you know hate on me in the comments but sr is not for me so on to the spec list for this damn truck motor piece of crap we're gonna start from the valve cover and we're gonna go all the way down to the oil pan and then we'll go to the drivetrain and then we'll do the suspension so you pop the valve cover and what are you gonna see uh well this motor is actually a 1995 ka so it's out of an s14 um but yeah they are the stock cams that have been ground to a 274 274 profile uh they're high lift high duration um yeah so they're pretty aggressive. Uh, once this thing is running, it's probably going to sound like a mild built 2JZ. I mean, pretty aggressive cams. So under the cams, I got rid of the shim over bucket lifter because everybody knows that KAs love to shoot the shims out of the buckets because, you know, it's just a crap design. Uh, so what I did was I used the stock VQ lifters since they are the same dimensions and they're a bit shorter. So it would it helps with the clearance with the high lift cam. I shortened those up just so that they could work with the custom ground cams. Under that is the Brian Crower dual spring and titanium retainer kit. Those things are holding in a full millimeter oversized stainless intake and exhaust valves. Because the valves are full millimeter oversized, we cut the old valve seats out and we put oversized valve seats. The head casting is fully poured and polished the exhaust side is mirror polished because i was like man i want to get as much flow out of this thing as possible i want the least amount of surface area you know on this exhaust port and the exhaust ports themselves have actually been uh, redesigned because i mean come on if you look at a stock you know ka exhaust port it's very restrictive there's so much material in there that you can remove and I mean, Nissan, they could have done a way better job at designing this exhaust port, but you know, it's a truck motor. So yeah, but we removed a bunch of material. The intakes, uh, they're, they're really not redesigned. They've just been widened and port matched. So um, I think that's about that about does it for the head. Now holding the head to the block is a set of ARP head studs. I did not go with the 10 mil the, the, the 11 millimeter uh because i don't know i mean i i i wanted to and then you know i told my boss i was like hey man like we should totally do 11 millimeter oversize you know and i don't know for whatever reason he didn't want to so i was like man all right cool whatever so at least now if something happens on the dyno with that thing you guys know for sure there's going to be a version 2 of this motor being built well especially at least the lower end so yeah just fyi so between the head and the block sits a Cometic multi-layer steel head gasket. Pistons are 9 to 1 off the shelf CP pistons. Uh, I believe it's a 20 over bore. Uh, the rods are scat with the upgraded ARP rod bolt. Um, all of the bearings are kings. And I also have the ARP main stud kit. That about does it for the block. I mean the, the oil pan is going to get modified in a later episode episode i think the next one actually um yeah so i'm just gonna fit it i'm gonna enlarge the sump and i'm gonna add a turbo drain back for the bolt-ons for this motor uh it's a cx racing exhaust manifold uh that thing is really well built but the ports they're horrible they really don't line up to the head at all so i had to take a grinder to them yeah but uh, yeah, the turbo that sits on that is a Precision 5531, I believe. Yes, it's rated for like 520 horsepower, so I'm not sure if I'm going to run it. I might scrap it. I might get a Borg Warner, you know, the new SXE turbos. I mean, those things seem pretty damn promising, and they're pretty cheap. But yeah, that's the hot side. Uh, the cold side is uh, an excessive manufacturing KA manifold. Uh, I welded it and I modified it to accept a Skunk 2 Honda throttle body. Yes, don't hate me for that, but there's a lot of reasons why I went 
that route instead of going with like say a Q45, you know, big 90 mil throttle body. And I'm actually having doubts about the 74 mil skunk because uh, I might change it up again. So uh, that's still up in the air. Um, I'm also doing a V-mount intercooler setup. So it's going to be super efficient. It's going to cool everything down really nice. Uh, yes, I'm going to cut a vent in the hood. I'm going to duct everything. So uh, yeah, that's definitely a lot more content coming to this channel. That about does it for the motor. Yeah. So on to the drivetrain. For a transmission, I went with an RB25 trans, you know, the rear wheel drive trans. So yes, there's a white bunny clutch kit that I kind of like Frankenstein. I bought the comp kit. So I have the flywheel from the comp kit, but then I upgraded the clutch to a Clutch Masters FX400 from a 350Z because, you know, I mean, those guys actually laughed at me. Funny story. Those guys laughed at me because I, I called them and I said, hey, man, like, I'm looking for a clutch that can hold at least 500 foot-pounds of torque. And it's like, well, what motor is it for? I was like, well, it's for a 350Z, but I'm doing my own white bunny kit and... Yeah, it's for a KA. And the guy's like, man, it's like, your KA is going to make that much power? He just started, I could hear him laughing on the phone. And I was like, man, fuck you. So I went over there and, you know, I picked it up. And the guy just looked at me kind of funny. And I was like, oh, well, whatever, you know. So, uh, yeah, but the flywheel is comp clutch. The clutch is clutch masters. And there's an RB25 transmission bolted to the back of the KA. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but... The RB25 transmission does bolt up to the KA with two holes that just need to be slotted slightly over just so that the bolt can go in. And it sits in the stock location for the S12. So there's no need to cut the shifter hole out. There's no need to bang the, you know, the firewall. Uh, yeah, you just bolt it up, notch the two holes, put two bolts through it, and it works. So that's the drivetrain so far. So on to the suspension. So much suspense. But for reals, um, if you guys are here from the Instagram, you guys already know the rundown on the suspension. It's part shot max everything since, I mean, when I started building this car, it was powered by max, but now it's part shot max. So if I switch those two, I'm sorry, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, part shot max, front S13 conversion. Uh, I use the S14 tension rod brackets that I converted into my own power brace. Uh, I'm using the coilovers, the S13 competition coilovers. Uh, I'm using the S13 front lower control arm with the tension rod. And then there's the A1 racing tie rod, the outer tie rod. Um, I don't know if I'm going to convert to an S13 front rack. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I got to see how this rack is, what condition it's in and all that. But for the, as far as the front suspension, that's where I'm at now. In the next video, I'm going to be fitting the white line S13 sway bar in. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Cause a lot of people are saying that no, you can't put an S13 front sway bar in an S12, but uh, trust me, you can. Uh, so yeah, but that does it for the front suspension. The rear, I actually modified, well I didn't modify, I fabricated my own uh, strut tower mounts for the rear. And the rear subframe is kind of touchy because I did a lot of work to it. I cut the crap out of it. I actually converted the rear to accept S13 hubs. So uh, yeah, but after all the fabrication, after thinking about how I was gonna do it, I was like, man, you know what? S13 rear subframe will go on much easier than all of this work that I've already done to it. So that's kind of uh, scrapped. I mean, besides, you know, the S the S13 uh, rear coilovers. So the S13 rear coilovers are staying, but everything that I've done to the subframe, the rear subframe, eh, nah, I, I really don't like it. It's too sketchy. Um, but yeah, I, I tried I tried mounting my diff out of the S13 because it is a cause two-way. So I did not want to get rid of that. So yeah, there's going to be an S13 rear subframe conversion coming later on in the future so for sure keep an eye out for that one but i mean yeah as far as the suspension i believe that's about it the interior fully gutted uh i've already braced the strut towers 
Uh, but that's about it. There's going to be a cage coming in the future also. But yeah, as far as the S12, where it's at, where it sits now, I believe that's about it. So uh, yeah. If you guys liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. It's cool. If you guys didn't like what I said about the SR earlier, fight me in the comments. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to fight nobody. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and keep an eye out for the next video. Sway bar time.